<sighs> okay. Hopefully, uh, hopefully everything's working on the audio and all that stuff here. I'll see if I can pull that up quick and make sure. Um, but we are in the fifth commandment on page uh, 378. If you are using the Book of Concord, um, the if you're using uh, the smaller one, what page you have there? What, 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 what paragraph Fit, are we on? The first one. Okay, 61. <laughs> 61. We're going to start at the beginning for the fifth commandment. It's a good place to start. It is. I've heard that. In fact, I've, I've heard that sung even. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I may have sung it myself oh, no. when I was in that play when I was a little kid. Uh, I was Kurt. So, uh, okay. The fifth commandment, you shall not murder. Now, when we think about the Ten Commandments, a lot of times we think, um, all right, you shall have no other gods, and we know we struggle with that, right? Second commandment, you know, misusing God's name, not using it always as we should. We, we can kind of see where we fail with that. You know, remember the Sabbath day, we can all kind of recognize, yeah, yeah, I have uh, not always prioritized that. Uh, honor your father and your mother. We definitely know we've messed up, messed up that one. Um, and, and the fourth commandment, the, uh, the teaching on that in the, in the Lord's Catechism is quite extensive because I think it's also one that we almost excuse ourselves on. Uh, but then the fifth commandment, you might think, ah, all right, you shall not murder. Cool. Haven't done that. I'm good to go, right? But we know what Jesus says in, in the uh, uh, Sermon on the Mount um, and that we actually are guilty of breaking this commandment. Um, but let's dive in. Let's see what it says here. Okay. We have now finished teaching about both the spiritual and temporal government that is the divine and parental authority and obedience but now we go forth from our house among our neighbors to learn how we should live with one another everyone himself toward his neighbor therefore God and government are not included in this commandment nor is the power to kill taken away which God and government have to punish evildoers, God has delegated his authority to the government, not parents. Uh, in earlier times, as we read in Moses, parents were required to bring their own children to judgment and even sentence them to death. Deuteronomy 21, 18 through 21. Therefore, what is forbidden in this commandment is forbidden to the individual in his relationship with anyone else, but not to the government. In other words government can exercise the death penalty <laughs> that's what Luther is saying here um, you can't I can't but the government has that authority um, when it is um, you know dealing with things like murder okay now this commandment is easy enough and often has been presented because we hear it each year in the gospel of Matthew chapter 5 20 through 26 where Christ himself explains and sums it up he says that we must not kill neither with hand heart mouth signs gestures help nor counsel therefore this commandment forbids everyone to be angry except those, as we said, who are in the place of God, that is, parents and government. For it is proper for God and for everyone who is in the divine estate to be angry, to rebuke and punish because of those very per re uh, persons who transgress this and the other commandments. So, anger in the sense of, okay, I recognize you have done wrong, and that is something I need now to deal with. Uh, parents have, Luther says, the, the authority to be angry with children. Have you ever thought about that? <laughs> have you ever been angry with your children? No. <laughs> 
When children are disobedient and break God's commandments, being angry with your children is reflecting the anger that God has towards the, the uh, breaking of his law. Right? Now, like God, parents are not to only be angry, right? right. But they are to, to uh, in that, um, they, they are to uh, punish their children, you know, not um, in ways that are inappropriate, but in ways that express what they have done is wrong and to correct them. But they also then are to forgive and um, show grace. So uh, the, the way that children learn about God, first and foremost, is mom and dad, right? This is why it's so hard for, especially young men, who don't have a father. You know, the father's not in, the, in their life. They struggle with authority in general, um, but especially with the idea of a heavenly father because they don't even know what that would look like. Or people who have been abused by parents, they have a harder time um, understanding God as a loving father because they don't even know what that would look like. They've not experienced that. Okay, um, 183, the cause and need of this commandment is that God well knows that the world is evil and that this life has much unhappiness. Therefore, he has set up this and other commandments between the good people and the evil. Now, just as there are many attacks on all commandments, so the same happens also with this commandment. We must live among many people who do us harm, and we have a reason to be hostile to them. Okay, so um, we live in a fallen world, right? People sometimes will seek to cause you harm or to cause harm to your loved ones. This is the reality of the fallen world that we live in. Um, it doesn't excuse that, but it's just dealing with the reality of how things are. Okay. Okay. All right. For example, when your neighbor sees that you have a better house and home, a larger family and more fertile fields, greater possessions and fortune from God than he does, he gets in a bad mood, envies you, and speaks no good of you. <laughs> Jealousy doesn't happen anymore, though. We've gotten over that. <laughs> yeah, um, really, here's the, the, the reality. Where does murder begin? It begins in the heart, right? And it's generally with, with jealousy. Um, and that leads to these other things. So by the devil's encouragement, you will get many enemies who cannot bear to see you have any good, either bodily or spiritual. When we see such people, our hearts would like to rage and bleed and take vengeance. Then there arise cursing and blows. From them, misery and murder finally come. In this commandment, God, like a kind father, steps in ahead of us, intervenes, and wishes to have the quarrel settled, so that no misfortune comes from it, and no one destroys another person. And briefly, he would in this way protect, free, and keep in peace everyone against the crime and violence of everyone else. He would have this commandment placed as a wall, fortress, and refuge around our neighbor so that we do not hurt or harm him in his body. Okay, so um, as, as a parent, when you see your kids getting after each other and you can see it's beginning to escalate, what do you do? You intervene so that you can hopefully prevent that from happening. However, sometimes... After you've intervened, they still find each other and they still <laughs> escalate. Um, not that I would know anything about that from growing up. Um, this is really you know. hypothetical, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Okay. As a, a pastor's kid would never do something like that. <laughs> So God gives us these commandments for the good of our neighbor and for our own good. Uh, so what happens if I do get angry and then I act in a violent way towards my neighbor? Well, nothing good is going to be there for me either. <laughs> yeah, we can start a feud and I can act violent back towards you. Yeah, or I get arrested and thrown in prison or, uh, you know, something like along those lines, right? Well, I want to have a feud. Are you watching, Mary? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's just all, all uh, tuned in here, learning about, you know, not murdering. That's good. I deal with her cousins, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the commandment has the goal that no one would offend his neighbor because of any evil deed, even though he has fully deserved it. For where murder is forbidden, all cause from which murder may spring is also forbidden. For many people, although they do not kill, curse, and utter a wish that would stop a person from running far if it were to strike him on the neck. Now, this urge dwells in everyone by nature. It is a common practice that no one is willing to suffer at the hands of another person. Therefore, God wants to remove the root and source by which the heart is embittered against our neighbor. He wants to make us used to keeping this commandment ever in view, always to contemplate ourselves in it as a mirror, to regard the will of God and to turn over to him the wrong that we suffer with hearty confidence and by calling on his name. In this way, we shall let our enemies rage and be angry, doing what they can. We learn to calm our wrath and to have a patient, gentle heart, especially toward those who give us cause to be angry, that is, our neighbors. Okay, so, your neighbor does something that really irritates you, and maybe they're doing it on purpose. Well... What would the worldly um, way be to deal with that? Well, as they're doing to me, I'm going to do to them. All right? Or do unto others before they can do unto you. All right? Uh, so, here though, Jesus wants to get our hearts. Right? It's not just about our out outward actions. It's about the hearts. And so when we feel that anger in our hearts, when we feel that frustration in our hearts, we shouldn't just say, yeah, but at least I'm not acting on it. Right. Well, okay, that's good. I'm glad you're not acting on it. But it's still there. It's still festering. It's going to lead to other problems as well. So let's deal with that. And how do you deal with that? How do you deal with anger in the heart? Okay, you can call on the Lord, right? What else? Confession and absolution, right? Actually confessing that you have this in your heart and receiving the forgiveness from the pastor as from Christ himself, right? Um, yeah, we, we need to recognize it. We need to call it what it is. What do we tend to do? We tend to use euphemisms, right? We don't say, you know, I have anger in my heart or I have hatred in my heart. Um, I'm frustrated. <laughs> you know, we call it by other names. Um, we don't like to call it names that make it sound like I've got a sin problem. Um, but if we call it what it is, then we can deal with it as a sin problem by taking it to Jesus and having him operate on our hearts and uh you know what do, what do we pray regularly create in me a clean heart oh god and renew right spirit within me okay um all right 188 therefore the entire sum of what it means not to murder is to be impressed most clearly upon the simple-minded in the first place we must harm no one either with our hand or by deed we must not use 
our tongue to instigate or counsel harm. We must neither use nor agree to use any means or methods by which another person may be injured. Finally, the heart must not be ill disposed toward anyone or wish another person ill in anger and hatred. Then body and soul may be innocent toward everyone, but especially toward those who wish you evil or inflict such things upon you. For to do evil to someone who wishes you good and does you good is not human, but devilish. Okay, so um, when you actually act in the ways of love towards another person and they respond in you know, hatred and evil, um, it shows them to be what they are, right? And, and uh, we don't want to be that, though. <laughs> so um, while we can easily try to excuse our own actions, if we're doing those things, we become devilish. Uh, so this is not just, I don't harm somebody by my own fists or by using a gun, but it's also, I don't um, encourage others to harm somebody. Or um, I don't uh, stir up somebody else to where they hate another person. Um, you know, like happens on pretty much every nightly news program these days. <laughs> the, uh, the whole idea is to stir up anger towards others. All right, 189. Second... A person who does evil to his neighbor is not only guilty, uh, is not the only one guilty under this commandment. It, is all, it also applies to anyone who can do his neighbor good, prevent or resist evil, defend and save his neighbor so that no bodily harm or hurt happen to him, yet does not do this. If, therefore, you send away someone who is naked when you could clothe him, you have caused him to freeze to death. If you see someone hunger, uh, suffer hunger and do not give him food, you have caused him to starve. So also, if you see anyone innocently sentenced to death or in similar distress and do not save him, although you know ways and means to do so, you have killed him. It will not work for you to make the excuse that you did not provide help, counsel, or aid to harm him, for you have withheld your love from him and deprived him of the benefit by which life would have been his life would have been saved. Okay, so there's the sin of om of commission and the sin of omission. Right, a sin of commission is one of those sins that you actively commit. Right, so in my anger, I punch Marty. Okay, uh, a sin of omission would be, I see Marty's about to punch Marty, and I could prevent it from happening, but I choose not to. <laughs> You're just getting beat and I up. I go into the other room and I get the popcorn. And we get the <laughs> That's right. So now, so now, in that in that instance, right? So I have become, uh, I have sinned against the fifth commandment. I have become a murderer. And his own brother has to, by getting popcorn, to watch this all transpire. Yeah. Uh, but, but, you know, it's, it's not just not doing something. It's what has God actually commanded us to do. Right? So the, the act of good, the act of loving our neighbor is at the heart of the commandments. Right? So love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. So we don't get to say... Well, I didn't hurt them. Yeah. As if that's good enough. Yep. Well, in our, in, 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 in our stupid little scenario, I could legitimately ask the question, am I my brother's keeper? Right. Wonder, right. Who, who said yeah. that? Yeah, am I my brother's keeper? And the answer is, well, no, you're your brother's brother. <laughs> you better be a brother to him and show love to him, right? Um, yes. 
worried about the sins of commission. Maybe it's better for me to go off and have myself <laughs> off now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So okay, so 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 that I don't accidentally have a sin of of uh, of commission, I'll just go off. And, and I'll isolate myself from humanity so that I don't interact with people and I don't accidentally sin against them. And now you have sinned against them by omitting the love that you uh, are, uh, should be giving to them, right? The, the act of love that you should be showing them uh, in serving your neighbor. So we don't get to just be like, no, 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 I'm going to um, opt out of society and I'm just going to go off on my own and not deal with all these people that are a mess. Uh, no, that's what you're qual called to do, actually, is to go and love those people who are a mess as Christ has loved you. Very difficult commandment. Very difficult They're commandment. Difficult. They're all difficult because we're all wrecked by sin, yeah. right? So our, our predisposition is selfishness. Um, you know, so when, when sin came into the world, we all became self-centered. We became narcissistic. And even when we think we're doing good, it's oftentimes because I'm trying to benefit from it in some way. So then how do we balance being in the world but not of the world? Well, okay, how do we balance being in the world but not of the world? Um, well, okay, so you can't avoid being in the world, right? <laughs> so how do you not be of the world? Well, by be, being renewed daily by Christ. Uh, and then living as one who is, who is under him in his kingdom, right? So even though we're in the world, we know who actually is the king. And so what rules do we play by? You know, what um, authority do we live under? Uh, and it's not the world's authority. It's the authority of the Lord. Now, there are authorities that the Lord has put in place in this world. And so now we actively live under those in, in such a way that honors God. Um, but all of the things get ordered according to the will of God. So the Ten Commandments give us the the way by which that happens the, between the Ten Commandments and, and vocations. Here's what God's given you to do. Um, and so now you can't avoid being in the world. In fact, you shouldn't avoid being in the world. You should actively participate in the world, but you should do so as one renewed by Christ. And you should do so as one seeking to love your neighbor um, as Christ has commanded. I was thinking along the same lines as you, with a very specific example. So, is it I, is it as great as mine? I don't. My example was fantastic. It, 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 it was oddly specific, and I think that it's kind of relevant to the times. Um, so back when back when I did the whole undergraduate school thing, I had um, I had classes in physiology and embryology and things like that, which basically means that by nature of learning these things, I know how to kill a baby from the moment of conception to the moment of birth just by knowing how the whole thing works, mm -hmm. right? So, so, so there is that knowledge, mm -hmm. and I'm in the world, and I could very well, you know, if I wanted to go that way, I could very well profit on that knowledge. Well, Correct. Could, could, kill, could kill many, many thousands of people, as, as many people have done, but you can also just take that same knowledge and teach people, okay, well, this, these are ways you can pregnancy safer. These mm -hmm. are things that you can avoid mm -hmm. doing. You can educate people as to the nature of different contraceptives that kill people. You can, right. you can, there, there's all sorts of different ways you can go there. Right. Knowledge is a double-edged sword for us. And, 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 so, and so a lot of what we do, it, it really has to do with what it is we choose to do with these tools because mm -hmm. it's, it's not like it's not like we're saving anybody's life by neglecting to go and teach embryology. Correct. It's not like we're saving anybody's life by neglecting to teach people how to make tools, even though I can clunk you over the head with a hammer. Either. Right. So it's, it's, right. It's just this nasty balancing act that we have. To well, so yeah. So, you know, one of the, one of the big things right now is, that people are discussing is, um, 
the, uh, the atomic bomb because of the Oppenheimer movie. And so, okay, well, here's this thing that can cause massive destruction, massive death, right? Um, well, that is, that genie's out of the bottle, right? You can't put it back in. People already know how to do this in other nations as well. Um, now, can that be used for terrible evil? Sure, could it, sure can, and 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 uh, you know, probably we're not far from um, somebody doing that. Who knows? Um, can it? Can nuclear reactions also do tremendous good? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the it's it's the cheapest power source that's available. Now we don't have it a lot of it because people are afraid of it, but. Um, that's beside the point, right? So the, the, the reality is the tools that God gives us, the knowledge that we have, um, can be used for good or for evil. Yep? And to go back to Donovan's question, <clears throat> I, think, I think we over, or maybe we don't think about it enough, we, we, we think we can do those things on our own. You know, we want to make things better, do this, or solve this, or and, and we're always spinning our wheels when the answer is really simple. Abide in him, be in his word, and let that feed you, and then your actions will come out as a result, or your your service to others, your loving community. You know what I mean? I think yeah, sometimes we yeah. set that aside and try to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that we, you know, we, um, the self-improvement thing, right? That that mm -hmm. I, will, I will will myself to do this thing. Yeah. Um, and that's a road to destruction. Yeah, and it's hard to. It, know, it is really hard. To yes. And realize you Correct. Need this word. Not only that, but um, we often try to do these things ourselves, rather than as a part of the community that God has, you know, put us within. And so, um, you know, that again, that individualistic nature. Um, that's the old Adam. So we finally got through right, the, 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 small, the small catechism during our 90s. And it's interesting because I've never considered the Christian questions and their answers quite nearly as much as when going over them with children. Yeah. And and even even prior to that, we didn't do we didn't do those during our study. We just we just skipped over them and went back to the beginning. One could one could then say just you brought up communion as a or mm -hmm. community as a point. And it's like well. So that I can learn to love my neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, that's one of those, you know, you look at the Christian questions and answers and uh, why do you desire to receive Holy Communion? And you think Luther is going to say so that you can receive forgiveness of sins. Right. Um, and, you know, sure, that's that's important. But what does he say? So I can learn to, you know, better love God and better love my neighbor. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. All right. You wanna you wanna fulfill the law of God. You wanna love your neighbor as yourself. Well, Errol, it's gonna start with Jesus. <laughs> so you go to communion, and there's Jesus. Yeah, you're not sure you understand, huh? Okay, I can't imagine why. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Siri needs Jesus. Okay, <laughs> let's keep moving. Um, all right, God also rightly calls all people murderers who do not provide counsel and help in distress and danger of body and life. He will not pass, or he will pass a most terrible sentence upon them in the last day, as Christ himself has announced that he will say, I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me naked and you did not clothe me sick and in prison and you did not visit me. This means that you would have allowed me and mine to die of hunger, thirst, and cold. You would have allowed the wild beasts to tear us to pieces or left us to rot in prison or perish in danger. What else? is that but to rebuke them as murderers and bloodhounds. For although you have not actually done 
all this to someone, you still have, so far as you were concerned, let him wither and perish in misfortune. Okay, so again, Luther dealing with the sin of omission. I'm not doing an act of good that I could for my neighbor. Now, we, we, we hear these things, and what's our first response? It's typically, how can I get out from under this a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> this seems like a pretty big, uh, a pretty big ask from God. Um, where can I find some exceptions, right? That's our first response, I think, humanly. Um, and yet, we need to let the law be the law, don't we? We need to not do that and rather say, Lord, help me to figure out how can I do this. Okay. It is just as if I saw someone navigating and laboring in deep water or one fallen into a fire and could not extend to him the hand to pull him out and save him. Or could extend to him the, the, the hand to pull out and save him and yet refuse to do it. How would I look even in the eyes of the world just like a murderer and a criminal. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a pretty vivid exp uh, explanation, isn't it? Um, it's almost as good as the one I came up with uh, earlier, the illustration. <laughs> Luther's, Luther's almost as good at that as, as I am. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Therefore, it is God's ultimate purpose that we let harm come to no one but show him all good and love as we have said this commandment is especially directed toward those who are our enemies for we do good to our friends as is ordinary heathen virtue as christ says in matthew <laughs> okay okay fine you you've you've loved the people that are nice to you right but what about that guy that's a jerk <laughs> um this is, this is, I think, an, a, 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 something for us to think about as well in our context is um, we, we live in, in a culture in which um, you know, self-protection is talked about a lot. And that's fine. But really, it should be protection of our, our neighbors, right? Um, so, and, and I, I, I think a lot of people that, you know, have concealed carry permits, that kind of thing, they do it actually for the sake of neighbors because they're thinking about, okay, if there's a situation, um, can I, you know, help save the lives of others? Um, and that is within our given context, something that is permissible. It's not permissible to go and be a vigilante, right? But if you see um, someone is, uh, their life is in danger, well, okay, how do we act in order to um, preserve their life? Okay, yep. Well, in that case, uh, doing target practice is pretty good, so you make sure that you don't get the wrong person. <laughs> that, would be a good, that would be a good thing, yes, yes. I'm going to the shooting range in order to love my neighbor. <laughs> All right, 195. Here again, we have God's word by which he would encourage and teach us to do true, noble, and grand works. Okay, so true, noble, and grand works. Oh, what are these huge things? Such as patience, gentleness, and in short, love and kindness to our neighbors. Those are the big things. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, you're right. I just can't read. Yeah, okay. Uh, in short, so, um, gentleness, patience, and in short, love and kindness to our enemies. Okay. You want to do some great work? Gentleness, patience, and love for your enemies. Yeah, it is. It is. You know, so, um, you know, people are always trying to invent new ways to do some great thing for God. All right, here you go. He tells you. <laughs> yep. He would ever remind us to reflect upon the first commandment. He is our God, which means he will help us, or help, assist, and protect us 
in order that he may quench the desire of revenge in us. Right? So, again, kind of back to how do you deal with the problem of the heart? You don't. The Lord does. Right? You take it to the Lord. 196, we ought to practice and teach this then that we would have our hands full by doing good works. That's a great, vivid way of saying it, right? If your hands are full because you're doing good works, you don't have any time to use your hands to cause problems, right? To punch Marty. <laughs> um, but this would not be preaching for monks. It would be, it would greatly undermine uh, from the religious calling and interfere with the sanctity of Carthusians, it would even be regarded as forbidding good works and clearing the covenants. For the ordinary state of Christians would be considered just as worthy and even worthier than monastic life. Everyone would see how the Carthusians mock and delude the world with a false hypocritical view, a show of holiness, because they have cast this and other commandments to the winds. They have considered them unnecessary, as though they were command, not commandments, but mere evangelical counsels. At the same time, they have shamelessly proclaimed and boasted about their hypocritical callings as, and works as the most perfect life. They do this so that they might lead a pleasant, easy life without the cross and without patience. For this reason, they have created cloisters so that they might not be obliged to suffer any wrongs for anyone or do that person any good. But we know that the works of this commandment are the true, holy, and godly works. God rejoices in them with all the angels. In comparison with these works, human holiness is just stench and filthiness. And besides... Human holiness deserves nothing but wrath and damnation. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know, Luther is just always so subtle. Um, yeah, the, and this is what Marty was bringing up earlier, right? The, what if I can just escape from the world and I don't have to deal with other people? Then um, I can do these things that I consider good works. Well, sorry. The Lord has told you to love your neighbor. <laughs> Not... Um, avoid your neighbor you you need to actually be around your neighbor to love them and so uh you know what what does luther call that though cross and patience you know that's taking up your cross is loving your neighbor loving your difficult to love neighbor um that's hard we were talking earlier how hard how hard a teaching that is yep. to our human nature. And then you reflect on what the Lord Jesus has done for us. Not only did he not, he would have been justified, or God, the Holy Trinity justified, to murder us for our mm -hmm. sins against him. Right. He didn't just not only refrain from destroying us. Right. But it was within his power to deliver us. Yeah, and what so did he do in order to deliver yeah, us? He took on the punishment. Yeah, he took up it's, our human flesh. He perfectly loved humanity, loved our na his neighbor, right? Um, actively and um, and uh, you know in, in in all ways, right? Um, and um, laid down his life. For those who, while we were enemies, right, Christ died for us. Took the very form of a servant, so there you mm -hmm. go. Right, or, right. Taking on the form of a servant, being found, uh, found in 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 uh, human form, uh, he did not consider equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing. Right, made himself nothing. Now. That's your model. That's your model, right? So you know, you remember the uh, the the WWJD bracelets that were big, like I don't know, twenty five years ago. I don't know, a long time ago, a long long time ago. Um, you know, what would Jesus do? Well, 
he would lay down his life for the neighbor. Um, and actually, we don't need to ask what would Jesus do so much as what has God commanded us to do, right? And it's going to be pretty similar in, in a lot of ways. Lay down our life for our neighbor. But, but what do I get out of it? <laughs> that's, that's, that's that old sinful nature that comes out, right? But what, what do I get out of it? What about me? Um, and, and that's why it's hard. That's why it's hard. And that's why it's constantly, we constantly need the Lord to renew our hearts, to continue to work on our hearts. Um, because um, that sinful nature sticks around. Okay. Last thoughts, comments, questions. Yes. What do I get out of this? Actually, it's, it's, a, it's a reasonable question for those who believe that they're justified by grace through faith. Because if you're justified by works, then what do I get out of it? Eternal life, right? Tit for tat. Mm-hmm. I do all mm-hmm. the right things for my neighbor, right. and somehow I, right. they tilt the scales in my favor. But if the scales are already tilted in your favor, then it's just right. new obedience. Right. And so now it's not what do I get out of it, but what does my how does my neighbor benefit? Because that's what I, that's what love actually is, right? Love is not about me. Love is about the other. And, and you know, you see this in marriage most most uh, you know um, uh, obviously, I guess. Um, and where there is a good marriage, each spouse is thinking of the other first. Where there are problems in the marriage, it's because one or both are thinking of themselves first and foremost rather than the other. Well, that's a, that's a little tiny sliver of the larger community. <laughs> uh, and so it's, you know, we, th- we think about how, how we struggle to love our spouse that way. Now we're to, to love our enemy selflessly. Yeah, it's going to be a challenge. You can turn that, that question around to what do I get out of it? Well, you already got everything out of it. You've been delivered from sin, death, and the devil. You're set free. You're, yep. you're, heaven is yours. The Lord is with you now. Yep. But go and do it. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like the uh, the person that you know has been adopted into a family that has billions of dollars, and uh, okay, well, okay, I just I get to now just just I don't have to work for anything. I just take care of other people. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, anything else? All right, let's close with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of life, and we pray that you would help us to love our neighbor, Uh, that even those that are difficult to love, uh, you would give us hearts um, that truly love others and that we would act upon that love. Uh, We would have active love for neighbor uh, and that we would not simply... Uh, seek not to break the fifth commandment by our um, uh, by our actions, but that we would uh, seek to actually uphold it by our actions. That we would honor you and honor the uh, the way in which you view life. Uh, we know that this is a challenge, but we also know that uh, by the Holy Spirit at work within us, we are able to love our neighbor. Uh, we pray that the the Holy Spirit would continue to bring about that change within our hearts, uh, that as Christ has loved us, so too we would love others. In Jesus' name, amen.